welcome back Kathy Haley, uh, publisher and co-founder of TV News Check for a fireside chat with Dana, Daniel Webster, rather, of Blackbird and Dana Yusuferi of Bloomberg. Welcome. Thank you, Michael. We've been hearing a lot about remote workflow this year as companies have moved their staffs into the field, into their homes uh, to produce during the pandemic. For the next 15 minutes, we're gonna be talking about cloud editing and how that technology has evolved and its potential to significantly change the way news reporters, producers, and editors work. If you were here with us Tuesday at the OTT News Summit, and if you had a chance to see Dana Yusuferi speak, you know she has been up to a great deal of workflow transformation at Bloomberg News. So we're very happy to have Dana back with us today to talk about how she's incorporating cloud native editing into her operation. Let me introduce Dana and also Daniel Webster, who's here from Blackbird. Dana Yusuferi is head of content production at Bloomberg Media. She has a 15 year track record in cross-platform media evolution and production. In her latest role at Bloomberg Media, she heads a new department the company formed by combining graphic designers, video editors, and content producers. The team produces high quality content for live broadcast, digital, and social platforms. Dana's team allows Bloomberg to maximize content and drive audiences to stories on their platform of choice. From the newsroom to post-production, the content production department is able to increase the content life cycle across all properties in the collaborative production operation. Daniel Webster is vice president of strategic accounts for the Americas at Blackbird. Daniel's career spans traditional and direct-to-consumer media. He held executive positions at CBS, Fox, and ABC, and now works to help transform, develop transformative platforms and video strategies for many sports, media, and entertainment companies, including Disney and ESPN, Vodafone, Viacom CBS, NBC, Warner Media, Riot Games, the NHL, and Bloomberg. Dana, you've been using cloud editing this year, and it's from Blackbird, since early this year. Why did you add that to your workflow, and how are you using it? at Bloomberg Media. Oh, we don't have any audio. Oh. How about now, be... testing, testing? Oh, uh, there we go. Audio is right. always nice. Just a little test for you. Hi, Kathy. Um, yeah, we've been using Blackbird and we really needed a solution for quick clipping for social distribution. So by using Blackbird, we were able to elevate our output, extend our distribution, and integrate with our asset management system to track and archive those assets. And by using Blackbird, we were able to take these simple clips and provide some customized branding based on, is it a quick take? Is it Bloomberg television? Is it a, a specific vertical within Bloomberg? And package it nicely with a branding bug as well as an end card to you know, eliminate that single soundbite and kind of package it nicely for that, for that specific platform. So you're, you're using it, I think, for social and for OTT and for broad, for cable, for whatever we're going to call it. Um, do you, um, are you also using it for all this at-home production that's underway? Yeah, I would say the pandemic has certainly opened the door a little bit quicker for us to implement remote operations. Um, you know, in this global newsroom that we already have, we've, we've always had that sense of remoteness, but I think this kind of elevated the output where at one point we had no one in the office and we still, you know, the show has to go on, whether it's live TV or a digital output. So it has it has increased it unexpectedly. And you had that call like back in March, you have two days to get everybody to work from home. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's all a blur at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you do you see that at home production? I don't I don't know what percentage of your staff you have in now on prem. Do you have any of them in? I yeah, out of a team of about forty five, I have two people, and it's basically just by choice. So we are we are still, I would say, operating in a full remote capacity from a video editing standpoint. Wow. And so, do you see at home production becoming a permanent an option or a permanent part of your operation in the future? 
Yeah, you know, I think it's definitely more of an option. I think we're using this capability to maybe expand our collaboration and expand our, our coverage base where, you know, it, this is proving you really can edit from anywhere and produce content anywhere, whether you're a reporter on the ground or you are, you know, anywhere in the country, you know, not having to work in a specific office space, but you can still contribute to your work as a reporter, producer, or video editor. Yeah. So, um, Daniel, a couple of weeks ago, TV News Check presented a webinar about news storytelling and technology in the 2020 election season because it's so complicated and so extended. We did a poll, a live poll of our audience during that webinar, and 60% of them said they were doing some editing in the cloud. Um, and that a, and a larger percentage anticipate doing so in 2021. Can you talk about the difference between accessing my on-prem equipment via the cloud and editing on a web browser? Certainly, yes. First, it's great to be here. Uh, hopefully you can hear me just fine. Yes. Uh, so as we all know, COVID has sort of accelerated um, everything to the cloud. And uh, I personally don't see any uh, sort of full return to on-prem sort of solutions. Uh, we're seeing a lot of sort of innovation. Uh, video, especially video editing, is in many ways the sort of last uh, chink in the video workflow to actually move to the cloud, partly because uh, typically the assets that you're moving around are really sort of heavy, big assets, and uh, also to edit them professionally takes a certain skill set and uh, quite a bit of a sort of equipment. Uh, by the way, you mentioned the elections. Uh, we just uh, finished doing the DNC, the Democratic National Convention, and uh, doing the editing uh, for that, which uh, huh. I'm glad to say was very successful. So. When, when you talk about 60% of people doing editing in the cloud, I just want to sort of make a distinction between there are really sort of two ways of doing it. You can have a big sort of uh, lift and shift, as it's referred to in the software sort of world, where you're basically taking what you do on prem and you're moving it into the cloud, and then you're providing remote access to those assets. It works. A lot of people sort of do it and uh, people feel uh, comfortable with it because they're using the same uh, software. Uh, but the way we do it is somewhat different. What we're basically doing is creating a compressed algorithm for that video and providing the ability to frame accurately edit it over a browser on a two megabit connection. The big distinction is that our solution requires roughly 10 times less bandwidth and considerably uh, less computing power and storage power. And why that's sort of important is because as uh, operations sort of scale, we can scale uh, very easily because you're not just replicating the same uh, infrastructure as you would in the other sort of model. Uh, and that's really important for news operations because uh, they require the ability to have literally, you know, hundreds and hopefully thousands at some point people sort of editing. Uh, just one final point, um, as a former news director, at the end of the day, it's really about enabling people to generate quality news. And when you sort of think about Bloomberg, they've got 2,700 uh, journalists out there, all of whom are doing great sort of work writing stories. In, uh, in my ideal sort of scenario, we want to enable them not only to write stories, but to edit stories really easily. So you magnify the power of that reporting source and you get better information out there uh, for everybody to consume. So Dana, how does uh, how does editing on a web browser change the experience of the producer, the editor, or the predator? Yeah, I mean, you're taking away the infrastructure, right? It, it's making an extended tool set just another tab on your, your web browser, which is making life a little bit easier for everyone. Less is more. And also, there's more added to everyone's job roles these days. I feel like everything 
every role is expected to produce a little bit more and roles are overlapping in the newsroom where you're, you're not seeing just traditional producers anymore. The video is becoming a natural medium in our industry. And I think it's easy to adapt these days. And this, this web-based platform is making it easily accessible for these producers. You have a sense of how much time it saves? You know, it, it, it depends. I mean, we're, we're using it for different news outlets, um, whether it's a live news conference and, and where you want it to go. So I would say, you know, taking the people out of the equation from requesting to an editor what they want to editing it to sending it to the playout server or where it may be going, it could be, it could be minutes, close to an hour, right? If, if you're just clipping what you want, it's, it's removing all of that. Um, and you can say, you know, I want that first 10 seconds and it's going right to the place where they want it to go. So it, it's, it's really hard to, it's too good to be true. I want to say of how quickly we can actually get content out there in this mobile, um, more social world where people are consuming a lot of this newsy video. Yeah, yeah. So Daniel, Dana's talking about changing the way people work, letting more people edit. Um, is that the long-term result, do you think, of letting people edit video on a web browser? Uh, yes. I mean, it, it's all about, as I sort of said earlier, giving people access to the tool set. And as regards to the speed, um, it's really what are you trying to sort of do and where are you trying to sort of send that? So the reality is, is that we're and I know this is a slightly overused term, but hopefully we're democratizing the sort of tool set that makes it uh, accessible, just as anybody now can sort of write a story in Medium or something and put it out there. Uh, we're hopefully enabling people to uh, edit video really sort of quickly. Uh, yeah. But you can also do a documentary, quite frankly, uh, in uh, a lot of software, in our software now, um, within a web browser. So, you know, you can publish stuff out in 15 seconds. You can take uh, many days and do what you want to do and have it approved uh, in various workflows. Let me just very quickly, you know, show you because showing really is sort of believing. Uh, hopefully you can see my screen now. So um, if I just sort of take a feed and uh, this is a live feed and you can sort of see that it's live because it's jumping every sort of few seconds and growing. I can very easily navigate around this uh, video asset and this is probably an hour long and even though I'm coming to you over a Zoom session, I can find something which is uh, interesting. Uh, I'm not finding very much interesting here. Uh, but uh, let's just say for the sake of argument, I wanted to um, edit out this uh, piece of, which is talking about Copenhagen. And uh, I can edit it that quickly. I can do multiple sort of edits around that. I can uh, join various sort of pieces of uh, content together very simply. And I'm not a professional editor. So, um, you know, what I'm doing is uh, far from uh, just beginning to show the capabilities of the software. We support some uh, 36 audio channels and 18 video channels, so you can do multimedia, uh, multi-camera kind of sort of uh, uh, productions. And then just over here on the left, I have uh, publishing points. So if I wanted to publish this out to uh, Facebook, it's as simple as simply dragging it over there. And this can also be automated if you need to. And I can publish it, that out, and you'll see it uh, being sort of rendered pretty much instantaneously. And if I wanted to go through some approval workflow, I could also uh, do that. So this is now uh, compressing in the background, and uh, in just a few seconds, it will be available uh, within Facebook. Uh, so uh, let me just uh, click on this, and you will see. Um, I didn't title it, which is probably something I should have done, not good journalistic practice, but uh, you can now see uh, that uh, that piece that I put just published out, well, that's a, Facebook is taking its time. So there's that piece I just uh, published out and it's quick as that. So to your speed question, it really is a, a matter of how fast you can type, how fast you can uh, 
uh, basically uh, edit a quick clip. Uh, for some customers, we uh, have improved their workflow from something like 45 minutes to 45 seconds, and that's what's really sort of powerful. Anyway, uh, hopefully that made sense. Um, more than happy to show anybody out there um, much more sort of capabilities of a, in a more sort of relaxed sort of setting. Well, put your email in the chat before we go. We have like we have like no time left because because we have to start another <laughs> session in three minutes. But that gives us three I, minutes. I will, I will do that. Yeah, and people can also contact Daniel on the TV News Check Events app. It's very easy. Just go in there and click on his name, and you'll be able to send him an email, a little message. So, Dana, just final thoughts on democratizing video. What what what's the long term impact on your organization, your operation of this sort of editing? Yeah, I mean, I'm relying on the people entering the workforce. They're coming in with more skills than I did 20 years ago graduating college. Um, I want to embrace what their skill set is that, you know, they want to do everything, they can handle everything. And, you know, in these overlapping roles and growing roles, you know, let's let's use it for what they're made of in producing, editing, creating great content. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming back, Dana. We really appreciate it. I want to thank Dana Yusuferi from Bloomberg Media and Daniel Webster from Blackbird for talking a little bit about the future of news and cloud native editing. We have a break of two minutes right now, and then we're going to the next session, which is about uh, monetizing the news on OTT. See y'all in a few minutes. This is super, everything happening in the space is super exciting. Thanks. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Thank you Dana.